Uh, it, 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 wait, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I'm going to get that part right, okay? Yes. Yeah. Basically, the bully tends to bully the victim based on a power imba uh, imbalance in the sense that they perceive that they have a power and then they can exert onto a weaker person, i.e. the victim. If we could somehow find a way to empower these bystanders to intervene, just to get people to pause, rather than just do a violent or aggressive manner, just to see, is there another way to solve an issue? And that's how we can actually equalise things a bit better. I made this uh, observation for quite some time right now, and just the way people walk, for example, do they shuffle? take small steps, they take you know, firm steps. It actually broadcast to the world how we actually feel, how we're actually feeling at that moment, or actually also how we feel about ourselves. So the decisions that we make in terms of our clothing, our hairstyle, and how we walk and carry ourselves, actually broadcast to the world, are we vulnerable? Are we confident? So bullies are those that have a strong innate need to exert power over another person. Now, they won't pick a target that's very hard or difficult. They'll pick someone whom they perceive as being an easier target. And so they watch for these behaviours within the people and how they walk, how they act and how they speak in order to have the idea that this is someone I can actually bully. So again, they would pick their victim. And the idea is if we don't give them any victims, then there won't be any more victims. I'd like to give some tips on how to actually help to counter bullying. Number one is to uh, encourage your children in to develop whatever skills, talents and potentials they may have in a wider aspect so they don't just see or define themselves strictly as a victim, right? But then there are certain other talents that they may carry on. They could be an athlete, they could be a musician, they could be an artist. On a, on a second aspect, it is about being assertive. Assertiveness is where you state your point of view and it's usually in the aspect that it's, you don't agree to something but with respect. Unfortunately, what I see in Malaysia is that many uh, kids or even parents, when they, when they face a certain level, they just keep quiet and accept, accept, accept until they reach a breaking point and then they may go aggressive. It could be verbally aggressive or even physically aggressive. But that actually allows the bully, or it's almost like saying, giving you permission to actually fight back and that's not good. And thirdly, it's about self-compassion or self-kindness. In Asian environments, we like our children to be perfect or at least portray to be perfect. But that puts an unrealistic amount of expectation on them, which actually tears down their self-esteem because no one is perfect all the time. So one of the ways to actually start getting back, building up self-esteem, but also to start getting back in the road to recovery, let's say if their children were bullied before, is to teach self-compassion. And self-compassion is essentially this. These are the words that we easily say to other people around to provide them support. So you can do it, I trust in you, I believe in you, this too will pass. All those wonderful supportive words. But rather than saying to other people, we say it to ourselves. When we start saying these things, we allow ourselves to see ourselves as not a victim, but someone who has suffered. And now we can transition to be a survivor and then slowly transition to build up our self-esteem to be whatever we want to be and to appreciate those differences. So, but we start with self-compassion first and not putting that pressure just to be perfect because no one is.